Oh, you will. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Frequency Soul Collective. Beck McQuilty here. Thank you so much for all of you joining us this morning. I know we're recording this because I know that some people couldn't jump on being a Saturday morning here in Australia and are working. So they did not want to miss out on this incredible call with our amazing CEO of Solex, um, Kai Larson. So welcome to our call, Kai. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, so so excited to be here, and we probably need to stop the recording and restart because that was way too much gratification to me. So <laughs> I'm just here to help if I can, and so we'll answer some questions and and get uh, some real positive motivation going here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And um, you know, we just kind of want to pick your brain this morning and 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 talk to you. We've so I've got lots of questions that are coming from the team. Lots of things that people are wanting to know. Everyone's really engaged and, and working their businesses and really enjoying um, the journey with Solex, which is amazing. But I guess the first question comes from me. And uh, I want to know, Kai, what's the plan for Australia in 2023? <laughs> great, great <laughs> question. Uh, and, and definitely um, things are up. So let me let me kind of like frame uh, Australia for just a minute as far as my, my viewpoint uh, from the company as a whole. We, uh, Beck, a while back, obviously, when you we first talked, uh, um, we talked about the process of, in, of opening Australia, where we were, what we needed in order to make the next tries to formally open uh, the market. Um, and we were at a, a point where we had, uh, you know, some customers down there. We had a few uh, QLAs to start, albeit uh, we weren't supposed to have QLAs yet because we weren't incorporated, but that was, that's a different story for a different time. Um, in the last year, Australia has doubled, okay? And obviously the, the, the majority of that is, is, is right here, is, is right here with this group. Um, what I uh, think, so there's a couple of thoughts regarding Australia and, and there's a lot of pieces in play in order to further uh, the opportunity. I would expect um, another doubling of Australia within the next 12 months. So that's 12 months from now, right? Now, there's a yeah. lot of things that go into enabling that, but there's also some other things that would go into place to uh, um, not just speed it up, but increase that prediction or that that ability uh, within our group uh, to get there. Uh, there's things like registrations, products, getting product on the ground in Australia for a 3PL distribution locally. Um, we're in process, and maybe we can talk about that in just a minute. Um, I would hope that, so one of the targets we have um, is, I love that, Katie. <laughs> Good job. Easy target right there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Well, and, and the idea isn't to necessarily shoot low, but, he, but, but it is that to double any time um, is, is a decent undertaking. As ambitious as we are, the realistic execution requires something from us and something from you. And that's why we've worked so, I think, so well together so far. Mm -hmm. um, what I would like to see is uh, by the end of 2023 to be in a position where we could hold a regional event where we bring some resources down, we gather, you know, one or 200 people together um, and we just have a party. Uh, and, and we kind of get, get into a better space to, to launch things um, even further. Um, we have, in, in order to do that, obviously, um, we're just, uh, it's just pure growth between here and there. Um, I know that, uh, Beck, you're, our, you're the first uh, platinum in Australia. Uh, and I've told you this before, I, I, I would like to, I would, I think you should be the first pearl in the company, in my opinion. I would love to shake up the rest of the markets um, <laughs> a little bit and and knock them off their high horse, so to speak. Not yeah. not to not to take anybody down, but to let them know that you guys are on the map and you guys are moving. You already are doing that. They already are aware of that. They want to know what you're doing, and I think collectively, what you are doing is actually being seen and is is piquing the interest of others on. Well, how on earth do I build a network marketing company, a direct sales company? You know, how, how do I do it? What do I go about doing? Um, and it's it's the success. Uh, what what should we have? I mean, yeah, I mean, we should have uh, um, 
you know, at least a sapphire by the end of, uh, by the end, we should have a dozen platinums um, mm -hmm. by the time we, by the time, this time next year, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I yeah. think the, the improvements to the comp plan, uh, it always takes, and this is just my observation, maybe you guys have different opinions. It takes a good 90 to 120 days, usually whenever you make improvements to something where it is actually a good thing for people to, to understand and to be able to process and then know how to execute off of a, a comp plan. What I'm seeing right now is um, in the last probably three, four weeks, uh, I've seen a ton of registration of understanding of what it takes to get where, mm. what activities get what reward. Um, and, and, you know, it's been in play for a while, but it's, it's getting to that point where I think that just bleeds through. Now, you guys are all getting to play with an understanding you've developed through the change, most of you. Um, but now as we grow, there's no change to develop through, right? Yeah. It's just what it is. And so that should be able to pick up the pace, in my opinion, as far as uh, the success you guys will realize. Yeah. Is there anything specific on 2023 beyond that that would help? Uh, well, I would not to put you on the spot because, you know, I'd hate to do that. But um... <laughs> you always do. Every time we talk, you do. <laughs> so you mentioned um, and not that we're, you know, going to. Um, you know, hold you to your word, but this is recorded just so you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I heard you mention that you're all coming to Australia. That's what I heard in my ears. Um, can you, maybe not now, but could you get back to us with a number? So what Australia needs to do, what number, like how many QLAs or whatever, what does that need to look like to, to bring the team down and to have an official, you know, big, exciting launch here? I think... Um... Uh, yeah, and without holding me to it, I think one of the things that, that Lauren and Shelby and I had talked about as far as when we go down and we just say, okay, let's kick things off, let's get things going, is when we could gather a certain number of people. Yep. Now, the yep. number that, that that we had in our mind collectively was 200. Can we get 200 people together okay. in one yep. place there? If we could do that, I, I mean, and I say all of us, not the whole company. But uh, we're going to, it's going to, Lauren, Shelby, me, um, probably uh, Deb, and we're, obviously we're going to bring some videographers and some marketers down to, to, to capture. And so we tell, show the world how great Australia is when we do launch things. So, yeah, awesome. But, I mean, whatever other resources we need. Yep. Well, I think that we can, I think we can make 200 happen very easily, probably even by the middle of the year next year. So, Let's um let's set the goal for maybe I don't know let's let's work out maybe a time frame and then uh, we can definitely work for that. Um, Two hundred, I think our team could definitely alone, let alone the rest of the company, come up with. So, and I'm sure that you know with with you guys coming, everyone would would come. You know, they would absolutely love to see you here. So we'll look forward to that, and we'll set that as one of our goals as a team. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, spring next year. Actually, that's a good idea, Joe, as um, as it's getting cooler over there. So maybe September. September is always a beautiful time here. And yeah. uh, so we'll, we'll set our little goal for maybe September next year. <clears throat> so Love that. We'll do it right, right after. We know that we're going to hold. In fact, we've already reserved the date for the next live day of discovery. Um, although we haven't put it out there, but it is, in, it is in September. So maybe just right after that. Yeah. Yeah. We figure out how to get down there. Yes, definitely. Okay, amazing. We can make that happen. All right. So you talked briefly before about, um, you know, obviously shipping and things like that and registering the products. And I know that we are in the process of doing that. Could you give us a little update as to where we are at and a bit of a rough, I know it's very hard to say because it's not your, your doing or your decision to be able to, you know, say it's coming here when, but roughly your idea of an ETA of when we might be able to get the warehouse up and running. Yeah, the um, great, great question. So a few, a few parts in that. So let me just walk through the parts really uh, succinctly, hopefully. Um, we've submitted the formulas uh, for Think Pro and Prime. Mm -hmm. um, and we've actually already got our first ingredient review back on Think. Mm -hmm. um, 
Pro is not an issue. It's pretty basic. We already know that it'll be approved. It's not. It's really not a hard one because it's it's pretty common. Prime is actually going to be a bigger beast because there's a lot more built into that. Um, and so we, we expect some, every market is different, right? Every, every market has their own regulations, especially um, when they take a, a strong stance at the well-being of their population and we're all for it. Um, the, the one thing we did get back, so, we, so in the think review, there is one ingredient that, uh, um, that they don't like is the lion's mane. Mm -hmm. um, even though lion's mane is, is fairly common in a lot of places. So what we're doing right now is rather than just, uh, we don't like just removing that piece from think because of what it does unique to the others. There are a couple other options um, outside of lion's mane. Um, but right now we're looking to see, can we figure out whether they'd approve that option rather than a resubmission. So uh, just so everybody knows, you submit the entire formula every time, they go through your claims and the ingredient list. And then if uh, they like don't like an ingredient, they kick it back to you and you resubmit it all over as if you've never submitted before. Um, and then uh, the other pieces behind Think right now is they just want the supporting work uh, which we have uh, as far as what is out there in the marketplace. There's plenty of of studies on each of the ingredients and where the claims came from. Um, that's just more of us uh, providing for them uh, the solution. So there's no concerns there. So if we can find this, the alternative to Lion's Mane that we like, then um, I know, Katie, I know, I don't <laughs> want to take it out. I really don't, but I want it to get approved so we can put it in market. There actually are, there, there are actually two that we're looking at right now, and I and forgive me, I won't say the two um, that we're looking at, but uh, um, there's one in particular that um, is a mirror to uh, Lion's Mane as far as uh, the research behind it. Um, and uh, in the natural state, if, if you will. So, um, if I can get an answer before I, that actually, that information came to me on Monday. So I'm waiting for, if we can get a pre-submission confirmation, then we'll just alter that. And then we'll make a version of Think that is for Australia. Now, I, I the, the thing that I want to make sure we do is that we can maintain the efficacy of Think with that swapping. And I believe we can based on what I've looked at so far. Um, but um, obviously if there's any hesitation, we'll, we'll, we'll hesitate too until we get it right. So that's just kind of how I roll anyways. Uh, I want to make sure that we get the right thing rather than just a thing. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I'm sure that's so frustrating for you guys. I'm sure it is uh, to just have to wait in that process, but we're, we're in it. Um, with that said, um, obviously under the NFR model, they, that's why we've been able to ship in. They're, they were kind of under the radar. Nobody has any issues with it. We haven't been flagged as far as I know. Um, Prime, I, I, I'm not concerned about Prime um, as I go through the ingredients because they're they're fairly strong. The only there, there's two that that they may um that that could i mean if they don't like lion's mane my, my thought is that the the glycine and the and what is labeled as broccoli extract but that's the sulforaphane that we're trying to derive from that and we are deriving from that um those two are sulforaphane in particular is a fairly newly found uh, um byproduct of the broccoli extract and so they may have a little bit of challenge because there's it's newer and when i say new we're talking about within the last 20 years or so mm -hmm. um but it's powerful so so for me it's it, for me that's for the 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 scientific community that's that's new <laughs> yeah you know, for for the rest of us that's boy that's you know turn of the century it's been a while
So, so it sounds like that Think and Omega might probably get approved before Prime, um, just purely because of the complexity of it, and it's probably a little bit further down the track. What's your gut feel on a rough um, time frame? If uh, uh, Think and Omega is not going to be an issue, uh, but Omega. Omega on its own is 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 it's great. I mean, we like it, but it's it's not new. What's what's new is the combination, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, and some of the the, the um, third uh, triggering effects when you combine some of these together. Um, let's see. Think. Um, if, if if with if with the resubmission. Let me be conservative then in, in, in my response and thinking that uh, it's probably going to be close to the end of the year um, if the next round gets approved straight away. Excellent. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. I was so expecting I you to say that, something a bit later than that. So that's brilliant. Yeah. That would be my goal. If I can get Think and, and Omega on the ground by the end of the year and then... Uh, as soon as I get approval, then I can get the coding piece. There's a technical side, right? Definitely. Um, where orders that come from Australia for these products get kicked out to the 3PL that then obviously does distribution. Yeah. And yep. so I'm waiting for approval in order to do that next step, if that makes yep. sense. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Oh, that's brilliant. That's really great news. In the meantime, what a lot of us have been doing, particularly with um, either Prime or Think and Omega, has been doing a tri-monthly subscription for people yes. so they're buying three at a time and then we're actually marking on the um the order form because we're doing the forms at the minute um just to head office to be able to go okay you know can you run this one tri monthly so and the great yep. thing about that from a strategy perspective as the team know we've gone through this in trainings is that it's still going to qualify them as a number for Punta Cana as well because yes. they need at least a minimum of, of three plus being active at the end. So, you know, yep. even if they put someone on um, Think and Omega today, well, I yep. think it's October. I don't even know. I think we just came into October here. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. So call it October. So October, November, December. So then they'd order again in January. So they do January, February, March. Then they'd order again in April, May, June. And then they would be ready for their next order in August. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. But as you're saying, you know, it'll actually they'll still have um, now that we've got thinking Omega probably coming a little bit sooner. Then they'll be able to be ordering that monthly, which would be excellent. Um, yeah. I'd really like to organize a call maybe sometime soon too. It's probably a bit too much to go on this call today, but to talk around the Think and the Omega versus Prime and. And strategically, you know, what do people need and, and what is the best way from a building a business perspective? You know, what, you know, is it all three? Is it one or the other? Or so that's something maybe we could jump on a call and see, you know, maybe certain people need um, certain combinations. Yeah, I would. And they're in there. Um, although micronutrition is the core, meaning this this ability to. You're trying to trigger specific events, and I won't go too long, so so we can save it for another call. But when you're talking about Think and Omega, you're really trying to target a couple of things. One is provide the resource for this massive oxygen consumption that's taking place, and its derivative challenges. Meaning, it's good. It's a design for massive oxygen oxygen and consumption. The challenge is when you mix that with anything else that causes any harm to the situation, pollutions, toxins stress, any of that, you're going to get a derivative problem, meaning more oxygen molecules in that space that when they're free, with that oxygen species running free, it can then become a free radical. The free radical becomes the challenge, right? That is what junks up the, the, the thinking process, literally the thinking process within the brain. You know, um, like I said, that what I shared with you at your day of discovery uh, in that recording was, is that that um, we we don't have to just age and have a slower thinking process. We don't. What that is, it's not just because you're getting older. What it is is it's because there is too much disruption in 
the electrical signaling down the neural connection. And, and it's, it's, it's that challenge of something in the way, whether it's a tangling, whether it's a plaque, what, whatever it might be that's in the way is what's slowing the process. Now, the brain has its own defensive mechanisms, right? Its own triggering process. And think is built to instigate those mechanisms as a part, but it's also then trying to provide the resources so that when we do instigate a cleanup process within the brain to keep it that uh, those, those uh, free radicals out, we also need to provide the resource so it can actually have the carrying mechanism of taking the the junk to the trash, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So that's think prime, and I'll, and I said I'd be succinct, and that was not very succinct. Sorry. I'll try to be more. Prime is designed for something very different. Now, um, prime is designed to target the cell, the cell structure. It's uh, repairing the damage that the cell structure experiences, optimizing its life, meaning providing its resources, providing its own protective mechanism to keep its, its function, and then to elongate the life of the cell. And now, do you have cells in the brain? Yes, you do. But you also have cells, obviously, throughout the whole body. What we're trying to say is, can we optimize the cell structure in prime? Can we make it um, its maximum best life, best performance? Because I don't care if it's a cell in the heart or in the lung or in the, you know, in the muscle, in the calf. I don't care where it is. What I do care about is that the cell has maximum viability. Hmm. And if every cell in the body has maximum viability because the concentration of of, of benefits in the bloodstream and resource available to the cell is always there, meaning primes ingredients are, are um, taken at the right regularity so there is a right concentration in the bloodstream, right? Right resource available. What happens when every cell performs at its best ability, repairs itself, and then lives the, the, the proper life cycle? Well, if every, every cell lived maximum life, what happens to you? Maximize your lifespan. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, it's a walk in the park. To me, if you want to argue longevity, to me, that's, that, that is the hidden message in Prime. Yeah. Yeah. Is the um, argument of longevity. Yeah, that's amazing. And we're excited to, many of us are already on the product here, but we're excited to get it here to be able to share it with our customers as well. But again, it is one of those things that, you know, I have a number of people on Prime where they're buying three bottles at a time and then we're running it sort of three, you know, tri-monthly at the moment. So strategically, I think that that's, you know, when we look at numbers and this is what we've talked with about the team it's not just about the scanner, you know, there, there is definitely, I mean, that is our, our, our key product. We know that, but it's, it's not going to be for everyone, but who doesn't want longevity and to age healthy, not age, you know, poorly. It's not about living the longest and feeling, you know, crappy. It's about living the longest life you can, feeling amazing and being healthy. And I really feel like Prime has the ability to help us do that. So you know, for those who may not be into the frequency energy side of things, um, you know, making sense of a longer, healthier life is definitely something people are wanting. So that's, you know, I kind of split my focus between the two. So um, yeah. sorry, I'm going to mute that other person. No, I love it because you can bring in in both ways, right? I, just exactly what you said. And I would, I would not limit the opportunity as far as the business opportunity because someone isn't interested in it doesn't understand frequencies yet that is not exposed it's so foreign to them they do understand most everybody understands supplementation but the question is i mean you really have to make the argument and the understanding that not our supplements are created equal i mean yeah. I, I was just looking at somebody gave me a box full of what they believe was the best um, i won't even say what type it is uh what supplement out there for this this and this i picked it up and I was going right to the back panel and I went to other ingredients. Yeah. That blows my mind. 
There are four. Yeah. Four. Yep. four. I mean, you know, you don't even need one. Yeah. Have, and the re why do they have four? They have four because that's what creates the margin for them. Yeah. That that is, and if they're supplements only, and, and forgive me for knocking anybody else. I'm not here to. to I'm not trying to to knock him. But what I'm trying to do is challenge the status quo. Mm. To say that, wait, why? Why are you doing this to the consumer? Why are you providing them a less than best solution? If you yeah. say it's the best, then make it the best. Yeah. If it's the best, the only reason you should have a filler ever in any product is if it's required as a flow agent for being able to receive it. That's yeah. the only yeah. reason you should have it. Otherwise, then why? Why do you have it? Yeah. The only reason why you have it is because there's a bit of margin, at least in the FDA and every country has their... There's a bit of margin allowed for variance. Yep. Well, they absorb that margin as profit. Yep. Yep. Because it's true, isn't it? It's so true. And, and I, kinda, know, I get fired up because it makes me, it bothers me a little bit that people do this. And so many companies do it. It really bothers me that they do it. Because why can't you give the consumer something better? Yeah, exactly. And many of us weren't even aware of that. You know, I look at, a product that I've been taking for years and I look on the back and it actually blows my mind how it never even occurred to me because it just was never spoken about, um, you know, that there are so many fillers in this product and it's exactly that, you know, if, you, if you're claiming it to be the best and you want it to be the best for the consumer, then why put all those fillers in there? So for us to have, you know, an incredible product with no fillers is absolutely amazing. So, um, but yes, we'd definitely love to do a whole call one day on um, Prime, Omega, and Think would be awesome. Um, my next question for you is, if you're allowed to say, what sort of markets are you focusing on next? I know that Singapore and Malaysia has um, come into our awareness, um, but yep. is there are particular countries that you're working on or anything like that. Yeah, so um, we haven't, so we, we haven't, like on any Wednesday call or anything, announced that Canada is totally open, but we are enrolling in Canada mm -hmm. um, uh, right now, uh, but only through the call center. So it's available. We've in started incorporation, so we're able to do that. Uh, Malaysia is on the target. There's a target there. Um, as we hit that target, that then will cause incorporation to, that'll knock the domino over, right? And then everything else falls into play. Um, I'll say that we've done some work in South America but the work that we started, we put on pause because the dis, uh, the QLAs in that space um, um, have, they're still working on their plan, let's say. Um, uh, then there is, uh, so there are, UK is, is, is preliminary work right now. Um, and uh, EU markets are is in preliminary work right now. Now, UK is further along than than EU. EU it's similar um, to uh, Malaysia in that there's a target to hit. Once the target hits, how we operate. So this is and this is a little bit different than other companies, but this is just from my experience in working in them and with them. Um, is that you can rush to the request because you have success in a market. Yeah. You can rush yeah. to any market. Yeah. My experience is that when you do that, when you think you have the golden touch, right? Anything you touch is going to turn to gold. Uh, that what you find is that you have two or three markets that are doing well that support the other 30 markets that are not even profitable. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. I, I'm in it for the long play, for everybody to, to have what is actually the promise of network marketing. And that is this something, this thing that can last the rest of your life yeah. and then be passed on and last, last the rest of your kid's life, right? That's what I'm playing for. And so in order to play that mm -hmm. process, what I need is I don't want to open up a market that is not viable from day one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's how we play. Awesome. Well, I know that our Malaysian and Singaporean team are working really hard to hit that goal. 
Their goal is for January to have reached that goal so that February, they even have the date because it's Chinese New Year. Um, I know Maylin's already booked her flights. She's keen. She's, she knows, she's booked her flight. She's going. And, uh, and I promised her I'll be there as well. And I promised her you'll be there. You didn't know that yet, but yep, we will all be there <laughs> in February, 2023 for the official launch of getting them up and going. So they're committed to that number. So let's just see. Um, yep. A couple of the other markets that were questioned um, when we talked about, you know, having this call with you was New Zealand. Yep. Um, because, you know, obviously New Zealand's uh, technically once you open Australia or New Zealand, it's generally a reasonable uh, it's not as difficult, I know. Um, so New Zealand is one and South Africa was the other. New Zealand, so um, one of the challenges with New Zealand is, uh, um, well, it is, it's, is the size of the population. Um, although there is a natural um, relationship between Australia and New Zealanders and being able to bridge that relationship. Um, I, I got some, I received some decent pushback from, I would never tell you who our general counsel is because then you're just going to hate him. <laughs> <laughs> but he is solid. Um, but his pushback to me was, can we get at least enough, similar, similar to what I just said, it's such a small market, but the costs are, pretty consistent as far as incorporation costs, uh, registration costs, all those costs are pretty, essentially it's the population of Australia compared to the population of New Zealand, the costs don't go down um, in a straight line. Yeah. So the costs are still relatively, the per capita costs are much higher in New Zealand than you'd say in Australia. Mm, okay. And so that that was reasonable, and the the welcome and the asked for um, feedback. Um, so what I would say with New Zealand in particular uh, is um, we need to build up the buying base a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so as much as it doesn't sound good, I'll tell you what I I'll tell you why. Um, and I'll try and make it as beating around the bushes as I can so it's soft to hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. And I think that that is really important because we've had a few inquiries in regards to New Zealand and that's, I, and I explained to the those who are asking, it's very different people coming in as, or wanting to come in as a QLA and yes, I want to build a business and it's, you know, I want to do this versus someone possibly coming in from another company that already has a, a team, like a large team, you know, if they were a leader in, in New Zealand, let's say, and they were committing to bring over two or 300 of their people is a very different conversation versus, hey, um, what, you know, can we open New Zealand because I've got this person down in Rotorua that, you know, is super keen. Um, you know, we've got strategies around getting them started without the country being open. Um, and being able to build that to a point, just like we're doing with Malaysia and Singapore, to be able to get them to a level of doing that. But again, it is a different conversation than, you know, having strong leadership um, with people ready to go um, in, in another country. So that's my understanding also. Yeah, you're, you're, you're spot on. Beck. That's exactly right. So. Yeah. And have you ever thought about South Africa? I know that's a bit of you know, South Africa hasn't even really, uh, hasn't, I haven't done much to even look in, into that, um, but I can. So let me, I let me look. A good contact but, here in uh, who has trained many teams without giving away any. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know this contact. I know this person, you know, <laughs> exactly. and maybe we can get him on the team at some point. That's right. Exactly. That might help us open South Africa. Yeah, good. Good. No, yeah. and the truth is, uh, and, and I'll pay this compliment uh, to him, even though he's not here, is our, our council uh, that we have in-house has opened um, just about every potential market that can be opened at least once, and most of them 20 plus times. Um, so... I really lean on him quite a bit because of his expertise. So this is his, in fact, he's in, uh, he's in Dubai right now. 
So uh, I mean, he's he's always uh, in, in transit for me all around the world, looking at uh, what our options are. Um, so so yeah. have confidence that, that when, when we look at this, we're not looking at this just from a flippant, oh, I hope this happens. Structurally, we know it can, yep. and we know how to. It's thus we just want to make sure that we can start that um, process on the right footing. Yeah. So that sustainability is there. Okay. And I think too, like us working hard here in Australia to really make Australia profitable for the company to enable the company to be able to open other markets as well. So, you know, yes. that's, that's really important for us too. Um, the next yeah. question is in regards to the animal comprehensive scan. Um, just wanted to check in. We've talked about that at Day of Discovery. So just wanted to see any more information in regards to that. Yes, yeah, um, we are comprehensive, animal comprehensive scan is coming. Um, uh, at least uh, um, horse, dog, cat, and, I um, and we're pretty close on a one of the pocket pets and I can't remember which one off the top of my head. We actually, um, it, right now we're actually looking uh, at the um, the display of it within the uh, and and that's quite a it's a lot bigger build than I than I thought it was in the beginning. Uh, we actually have a, a a very special design house that does the design work for us, um, just because it's so intricate. Mm. Um, and so, uh, in fact, we're we're expecting the first set of designs in the next three weeks. Yep. Um, and but this let me give you a, a probably a, a comfortable time frame. It will be a progressive launch with my the objective being we can comfortably say that by the virtual day of discovery, everything will be out there and running. Now, let me say everything with a little bit of a caveat. Everything always is in change, too. We are like, I always, I don't know if there's a week that's gone by where there wasn't a change that we've done as far as an improvement to the scanner. Yes. So I say that, but there, there's kind of this core build that we're trying to get to with the with the, the um, pet scan. So okay. progressively, um, say in the next month, six weeks, start to see it, and then we'll progress our way into uh, all parts functioning. Okay, amazing, okay. excellent, thank you. Yeah. Um, a question that was sent in from one of the girls, just in regards to um, the food sensitivities. Um, which is an amazing new upgrade to the device, which we're loving. Um, yeah. Except when it tells me I'm not supposed to have coffee. I'm like, ah, uh, and then I just ignore it. But anyway, um, <laughs> I'm like, ma, that one, that one will be okay. Um, no, okay, I'll, I'll say this. Oh, perfect timing. Oh, okay. that's Welby. Here she is. Hi. Hi. Wow, there's a lot of you. Hello. Yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. You guys have all got sweaters on and we're all in short sleeves. <laughs> well, that's 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 life down under, I think. I mean, up here in Utah. You... Yep. We had our first cold day. So we're, we're actually trying to celebrate a little bit of cold. It's been really hot. <laughs> yeah, it's been really hot. And really, we shouldn't be wearing this. We should be yeah. in short sleeves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're willing it in. So what a little cool yeah. What I well, okay. So I was just, we were just talking about food sensitivities and I was just going to say how we were just, so Shelby's from Maine, that's the Northeast, right? A part of the United States where lobster mm -hmm. is, is they're famous for that. Yeah. And so when we go there, she always, we always eat some of that and she hated it because you did, you ate lobster and then did your food sensitivities and what came up? I ate lobster three days in a row and then uh, on the fourth day, when I ran my vitals, lobster came up as double reds. Oh. And, and so, uh, and so Lauren uh, actually was in Maine with us and he just said, just stay away from it today. Yep. Yep. Okay. We've got to change something. You're on this side. Right. Why? Because I'm on the, because you're always on that side. I'm always on this side. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just true. like he's on the calls. Yeah. Just like <laughs> on the calls. <laughs> So one of the girls was saying, though, um, uh, just as an example, dates, uh, one of her uh, friends is 
uh, anaphylactic to dates, but on the scanner, it came up gr like green, a five and a five. Why would it do that? Well, so that's a, that's a great question. Um, but we're, so first of all, let's get the, the make sure we remind ourselves of what that is represent. What, what is that representing? Mm -hmm. Now, did she have dates on that day? Of course not. Of course not. So then, what is what is the frequency representation regarding dates? It's not a diagnosis, mm -hmm. right? Right. We're not diagnosing her condition with with dates. What we're trying to do is we're doing the scan and we're picking up the frequency of that, that piece in her system, meaning she's okay right now. Not that she can have them, yeah. but the condition of her body is that she, there's no reaction. There's no, I've had lobster for three days and now it's reds when before that I didn't even have any reds. So she has no reds right now. My anticipation would be that if she took, if she ate dates, it, that would it wouldn't no, stay it would green. Double, it would be double red. Yeah. Yeah. I might, that would be what I would expect on a frequency side of things is that she would have that representation because things are not in balance regarding yep. dates. Yep. Gotcha. Does that makes sense. Yep. Absolutely. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, the next question is, uh, in regards to updated basic training, um, will there be Cephidot supplements, et cetera, added? Um, and if so, do you have a bit of an ETA on that? <laughs> okay. Basic training is so nasty right we now. We know how bad it is. We know and how outdated so... it is. Yes, and it is actually, if you could see the list of videos that we're making, it's a mile long. Um, and basic training is one of the top three right now priorities for us. Um, so it is coming as soon as we finish up our phase three. Yes. So, <laughs> so we know it needs to be updated one. Yeah. Two is we know it will be need to be updated in the future again. Right. Because going back to the, it's always changing. Um, what I would do in between. So, so with that, anytime, even after we update this, um, lean on that's part of the, the Wednesday call too in particular, and getting good at, where is there a segment in the Wednesday call with the update on Cephi dots, for example, right? And in and, and helping my team better understand, or a new person better understand is, hey, here's the basic training, and here's the supplements that we'll use until they update the next basic training, if that makes sense. Yeah. That That's not an excuse other than- And we know how that that's not very convenient either. Yeah. But, um, right. it's, but it's coming. Yeah. Very soon. So it, it's on the list, but I, as far as strategy, ongoing strategy, maybe use that as, as we, if we launch a new thing with the scanner, um, maybe just kind of uh, know where that is for development of your new people on your team as they go forward. So that, yeah. that helps. <clears throat> well, when I first started, we didn't even have the university. So I right. went to the Solex LLC um, YouTube channel and I scrolled the whole way down to the bottom and just over a period of time, I watched all of them because, you know, that's great information as well. And there's so much on there that's not on the basic training that I picked up just along the way. So I just thought that was a great idea as well. And so we, we guide our people to do that too, you know, definitely do the basic training, but as you have time, just listen to one video after the other until you're caught up to the most, you know, and obviously listen to the weekly call, but watch go back and watch the older calls because they are amazing yeah and i would with that said is um it does i think on every weekly call we have the segments mark time marks we so do There's you don't have to go out. listen to a half hour call no. and and listen to you know somebody blabber about something you don't care about what you can do is go into that drop down and say okay well, does this have content that i want to hear click on that go right to that segment listen to that and move on and yeah. then you can maintain i mean I know that we put out a lot of content when it comes to that, and that in and of itself can be burdensome. Um, at the same time, the, yeah, at the same time, uh, there is a, we feel a need to make sure we're putting out as much as we can uh, useful information uh, over time so that there is, we're not shortchanging anybody on uh, the ability to, to be educated. That's, That's right. what we're trying to do at least. And I think that that's um, so amazing as well, because those calls are about education. So 
that's why I always encourage everybody don't miss those calls on a, it's a Thursday for us around sort of lunchtime if if people are busy just go back and watch it you know that evening or the next day to make sure that they're keeping up with you know what's what's happening and and exactly that the education pieces are so important so that's amazing um, i'm just I making sure that everyone did everyone here see this last week's call who the top enroller was i'm just making sure. Oh. okay all right and beck i have your coin i took a picture of it to send you and i haven't sent it yet i'm going to give it to you at disneyland okay okay thank you as long as it doesn't add too much weight to my shopping for <laughs> Well, just don't, you know, it depends on how many you win between now and then. That's right. Well, that's true. That is true. But I tell you what, my suitcase is going to be pretty empty with all the Tim Tams that I've bought for the crew at the office. So. <laughs> Those are so good. I know, I know. To bring back, so. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so if someone is using it, their PC, do they need to be purchasing the Bluetooth headset to optimize their results? Uh, I would say yes and no. So let me answer that in two different ways. Okay. Um, the Bluetooth on a PC or, or, or bring your own device uh, for that matter um, is it's a matter of focus when it comes to optimizing. Okay. So uh, I like, I like to say it this way and, and hopefully this scenario works. Think of a camera, like the old camera, right? And, and you, you dial in the focus uh, at a distance um the the bluetooth the transducer in and of itself will bring in the focus of the frequencies okay outside of the bluetooth or outside of the transducer itself like there's i'll tell you many times i'll just i will run my scan oh there's my oh, I know, that's the first thing i just saw i was like <laughs> <laughs> but i'll 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 do an inner voice or well, no inner voice. I always, I always every time have my headphones on, but I'll do other scans, body systems, and I won't have my transducers on mostly because I just don't have them on me, but I know I need to do it right then. And so I'm doing it right then. I know what I'm losing is, is the focus of the optimization. Okay. okay. So that, that's how I would put that. It is beneficial to have it because it brings in a focused frequency. But if you don't it, have it, doesn't mean don't do your scan. It doesn't still mean, do your scan. Yes, yeah, still do your scan, and you still get optimization. Yeah. It's just uh, um, a matter of focus. A matter of focus. Yeah, you just bring a little, not as crystal clear, right? Yeah. Frequency. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah, that. that she always does sense. a great job of that. She'll say in three words what it takes me three sentences to say. <laughs> three sentences, three storylines, three chapters to say is That's what you why say. Shelby's there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I invited her. <laughs> Pick me out. Help me out. Um, okay, well, you might be able to help with this one, shall we? One of the team asked the question of in regards to the definition of female and male enhancement, and can it be found anywhere in our um, information that we have already? So they want to know what's like what's in female enhancement, what's in male enhancement. Okay, so basically, those are are regards to hormones. Um, obviously fem females are stronger in estrogen, um, but also have testosterone, right. And all the other, we all have all the same, yeah. we all have all the same hormones, male have higher testosterone. We all know this. Um, so, you know, there was a question actually that came up on the Solex group the other day that we kind of all were talking about where, um, I can't remember exactly what it was. Why did my, why did my four-year-old daughter get male enhancement yeah. or something like that? Yeah. And so it's a matter of hormones. It's a matter of being lower or higher. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, and, and the balancing of those and, and the balance of the hormones, or the frequency of those hormones. It wasn't better. a mistake. It wasn't a uh, the scanner didn't realize that that was a you know the, didn't realize the gender. It's a matter of the hormones and what you need and what needs to be balanced at the at the time. Yeah, Does that makes sense. Makes sense. Yep, a hundred percent. Yep. Because we could, I mean, the, the thing is, uh, it's possible to take those frequencies and just use your profile indicator as to what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. But then it becomes just a blanket frequencies data set rather than looking at the frequency balance of hormones within this person, regardless, period. Yeah. And so yeah. thus it did. Thus, you can have a male dive into a female enhancement. That, that in and of itself actually 
we'll probably change the term because of these last couple of questions, I think. Yeah. Just so it's a little bit more clear. Um, and the same and the inverse of that is available too. But it's because we're not looking at profile. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the frequency pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, is, is the frequency pattern more in line with because we don't care male or female. What yeah. we care about is we're looking at the frequency pattern of these hormones. Yeah. But to go back to the original question, when you're asking what's in female enhancement, enhancement, what's in male enhancement, it's all just a matter of balance. Um, they, they both have the same hormones in them. It's just that the female enhancement has higher estrogen and the male enhancement has higher testosterone. Yeah. Ah, gotcha. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so someone was just asking in the chat here. So female enhancement will be good for menopause where estrogen is flatline minimum after menopause. It's, it'd be good to run that in the, in a playlist under sort oh, of yeah. like oh. hormone balance. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. That's really cool. Um, now, ne next question. We've only got a couple to go, I promise. Um, yeah. If a vitamin or a mineral comes up as an eight, just as an example, let's say it might be zinc, does that mean it is, and I know that this has been covered in one of the calls before, but just for the new people who may not have got to that yet, um, does it mean it is too much or too little or that it is just unbalanced? How do you differentiate between Okay, we're gonna have the expert yes. answer this. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's right, that's the answer, yes. Yes. Uh, no, <laughs> this is what we want you to do. Last, so not this not this past Wednesday, the Wednesday before, go watch that with Becky Coots Kimberly, and she explains this so yes, well. Did. There were so many examples she gave of things where it's a nine, but whatever it was was too low. It's a, it's a, it's a one, but it was too high and opposite. It kept going back and forth. So the answer is yes. Yep. You can. Go. Yeah. Go. Yeah. No. And I would, I, I think, especially when, it, when you're talking about minerals or, or the vital scan uh, in particular, I would look at also derivative parts to know what the issue is. You could have zinc, but, but like Becky said, she didn't talk about zinc. She, I think she iodine. Said iodine. Mm -hmm. but you, it could be what type of zinc, right? What's yeah. what's the source of that zinc? Yep. You could have a massive amount of zinc that um, that isn't plant derived and your body needs plant derived for absorption. You could have it in your bloodstream, can't absorb it, can't make use of it. It's just sitting there. And so you and you take more and you take more, but it's not doing much for you because it's an absorption it's issue. Or it's an absorption issue. issue or, and yeah. so you might then start to look at, well, what is a eight in zinc? Uh, okay, so, so this goes back to part of your original question of what does that mean? Hmm. And, and we, we go, the one thing I would say is it's out of balance. Yep. Out of balance is, is, is the one where I would start. But I would look at derivatives. Where, go up the chain, go what down the chain. What else is out of balance? What else is out of balance that's connected towards the use of zinc in my body? And can I put a little caveat in there too? Don't forget, don't just look at one report. Make sure you're looking for trends. Make sure you're at yeah. least three in a row and yeah. you're looking for trends. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I do say that to people when I'm looking at their scans, they go, oh, iron, but I take iron and I say, yep, that's perfectly fine. And it could be that it's just unbalanced at this point in time. And it could also be, it could potentially be that, you know, you need a different form. You know, they could be taking a tablet and you might need the liquid, but let's yeah. do, let's, we, we mark it and we track it. And if it's still an issue in, you know, after two or three more scans, then we can go back and have a look at what needs to be shifted. Maybe we do change it up. Maybe we change when you're taking it or how much you're taking and then rescan and see if it balances out there. So, but again, it's exactly that, you know, you don't necessarily, just because you see that go, oh my gosh, you know, they're, they're lacking this or it's too much of that. It is an unbalance, but let's work with the body over a period of time to see if that shifts because, you know, these scans that we're doing are in real time. And just because I can't, it says I can't have coffee right now and then I forget that, you know, in half an hour when I go to the coffee shop and I just buy it anyway, I'm sure that the scanner would have told me that I could have coffee. That's my <laughs> <favorite>. <laughs> Of course it would have. Right? <laughs> so, yes. Last question. All right. So with Cephi dots, can we use a new adhesive over the top if you erase the frequency and imprint? So you've used it for three days, then you take it off. Can you erase the frequency, put new frequency in and use a different adhesive? Yes, yes you can. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, do it. Okay. 
do it. I mean, you're going to get over time. It's super thin foil lining. You'll get, you know, normal wear and tear on that as far as that's where the actual frequency is held. Right. But, but I would. And we have. Oh, look at that. What, what, what? Who is this? You showed me your Cephi dot. There's oh, your dot. love it. Love it. I just took mine off. I had one right there too. Now I have to tell you that I saw somebody um, since day of discovery, they programmed perfect body into their Cephi dot and they were programming it every single day. And she said, I've changed nothing other than wearing the Cephi dot with perfect body and I've lost 10 pounds. Oh. And so somebody commented and said, <laughs> I know, I know. So somebody commented and said, I did the same thing. I've lost five pounds. You guys, I read that and I got reached over, grabbed the Cephi dot, put perfect body and I've had it here. And I'm just <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> well, you know what we're all doing when we get off this call, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Hello. But you don't need it. Hi, Addison. Hi. <laughs> you ready to go on some rides? Sleeps. Yes. <laughs> How many sleeps? Oh, good question. Uh, hang on. Ooh, I, I know did. there's six more sleeps until my birthday. Oh, <laughs> oh that's, that's a big deal. A little bit more important. Happy birthday. <laughs> Addison? 20 more sleeps. 20 Great. more sleeps till we leave. Okay, you and I are going to get your mom to go on a scary ride, okay? We're going to make her, okay? Well, you want to make sure the videographer's there on that day because seriously, oh, yeah. it's funny. We're going to film it. We have two. And yeah, next time you have me on this call, we're going to share it with everybody. Yeah, we we're are. Put it right in the chat. <laughs> we're yeah. going we're gonna to go on one that has a loop de loop. Oh, a loop de yeah. loop. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, we're excited. So, yeah, very excited, aren't we? Hey? Yes. Yeah. So. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you so much, Kai and Shelby, for spending time with um, our amazing Australian team. We're very, very grateful. And we look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, even though we think about all of you all the time. Yeah. So we can't wait to come out to Australia and meet you all. Yeah, well, we've already worked out the date, Shelby. So Kai is committed to that. And he'll just let you know so you can book the flights. <laughs> send me the recording, okay? <laughs> I'll send it to you. Don't you worry. I know. I know. She will. She will. <laughs> oh, we love you guys. Awesome. Have a Thank Thanks you so for much. Up for us. <laughs> yes, they did. Yeah. Our way team up at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Wow. 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 Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You yeah. guys take care. Bye, Thanks everyone. Much. Bye.